What's up? It's your boy, D-Change, coming at you with another Daily Dave. This one's for Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. So I don't like accents. And what I mean by that is I don't like it when someone feels the need to, I guess, appropriate uh, someone's foreign language accent and single that out as a pure comedic device. So... To contextualize this, I have a friend who's, I guess, particularly good at mimicking how other people from different nationalities speak English, but say in like a, you know, in like a French accent, in like a Mexican accent, in like a Japanese accent or something like that, right? Um... And so I was asked at one point, oh, David, do you not like it when I do accents? And I actually said, like, no, because I don't care for them. Now, it's not particularly a case of, like, you know, I'm looking around to be offended or whatever, or, like, I'm super sensitive to it. Maybe I'm more sensitive to it now because I realize that, like, in a lot of, I guess, mainstream media or things that get a lot of spotlight for being lowest common denominator humor um a person with an accent is normally used as a comedic device purely because you kind of like oversimplify that character and like objectify them as like this kind of oh hey like i'm one dimensional and all i do is encompass all the stereotypes of where i come from or whatever it doesn't help that it tends to be uh, used against like you know Asians or blacks or Latinos a lot in the U.S. which is you know that tends to be the like oh boy here we go again types of subjects right where it's like this is the only way I see these people um, and so I mean I, you know I'm guilty of it too like I definitely grew up doing the whole like oh look at me I can do the whole Chinese thing and it's like now that I, now that I think about it I'm like and that's just for cheap laughs, you know? And this is a thought I've had before uh, with other types of jokes, too. Where I was trying to understand, like, why do I have the sense of humor that I do have? Because, I mean, to be fair, when, when you don't share the same sense of humor with the people around you, you definitely feel left out. And it's not, like, on purpose, right? Or not necessarily. But um, it, it's kind of like... Uh, like, why, why can't we bond in laughter, right? Um, and sometimes, yeah, maybe we're just taking it too seriously, right? But at the same time, like, why would I laugh at something I don't think is funny, you know? I mean, why do, I mean, laughter is an interesting uh, reflex, actually. I was watching a video about, like, tickling and why it exists, and laughter is actually... A, a very multifaceted behavior like it's not just to communicate that you think something is humorous it's also it's also meant to like ease tension like when you're nervous right or uncomfortable i mean i'm have you ever laughed like as a response to something you thought was wrong or something uh, you know like part of comedy is shock value right um, saying something that's just really out of left field or super offensive, but because it's so ridiculous, it's funny. Like, there's a lot of comedians who who do that and, like, got really popular because of that. And I have to admit, the ones I feel, like, the ones I feel like are good, you know, like, they do that sparingly. It might be their shtick, but it's more like they, there's a build up to it. But, I mean, you know, we all have our own different gauges of, of humor and all that it's just I guess it's because and there's no way to say this without sounding super snooty or whatever but because I spent time in Tokyo and I was very fortunate to have met so many people from different nationalities I felt like uh it was a it was a really fun like time of cultural exchange with a lot of different people and if anything, I feel like because of those interactions with those people from so many different parts of the world, um, I feel like I can, I, I have a better perspective now of like, not just 
you know, my own point of view, but of like how other people see things throughout the world, how other people experienced their lives as expats and, you know, how they would see like people that look like me, how they would see like people from my country, etc. you know? So I guess it's just one of those like, oh, I felt like my my horizons were broadened, right? And in a way, it kind of gets rid of the, I don't know, the feeling of like, oh, yeah, like, you know, those people sound funny. Ha ha, right? I don't know. That's just, that's just like, uh, just the random thought I had, which kind of reminds me of, um, I mean, the the last thing about accents is the fact that we all have accents, right? We just don't really think about it. I have like the Southern Californian standard American English accent, whereas someone from say Boston will definitely have a Boston accent. And then New England has its, you know, Boston's related to the New England family of accents. And as you go through the States, you have very, you have varying degrees of how English is spoken in the nation and then you go up to Canada and you have your own subtleties up there and then you start going to other countries outside of North America such as like the Philippines you know English is a standard language there and then Singapore you know and so I don't know is it always boils down to just like something like oh man UK English is like the or like English posh English like as in England English is like the the pinnacle for a lot of media and then like it trickles down to like a lot of Western Europe and and uh, North America and then it's like everyone else is is like lower <laughs> I don't know that's just that's just how I see it now I guess but I mean you'll notice it in media it's always like oh let's just get a bunch of British actors and actresses to play like certain characters um yeah I remember um like uh, a German person told me they were surprised to see like British people playing like Nazis or whatever in an American movie. And it is kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, they don't, you know, they don't sound German. Right. So it's, it's just one of those perspectives that I feel like um, have stuck with me and make me realize, Oh, like, like a lot of media is kind of, I'm not going to say it's like super, what do you call it? Like it's a conspiracy theory and that everything is like rigged against you, but it's, it, it is a systemic thing, right? It's like people have these biases and they contribute to a system that favors it. Therefore you perpetuate this, this behavior of like, Oh, just British people. They just sound so much greater. And then like, Oh, the, you know, the South, like everyone always makes fun of the South, not just in the States, but outside of it as in the Southern United States. Um, and it's, you know, it can be really unfair because, I mean, that Stephen Colbert even said that he practiced speaking like a, like a newscaster that he saw on TV, which is like American Standard English. But like, I don't know, I think it comes from Hollywood, maybe be just purely because of like TV and all that. It's either New York City or or Hollywood or I don't know, L.A., right? But um, he said, yeah, he, he purposely modifying the way he speaks because he's from the south and he didn't want people to think he's like dumb right and i always thought that was like that's fascinating i was like wow you know it's, it's something i don't think a lot of people really think about that right so that's that's my whole spiel about accents i guess i think i think it's just like it's low-hanging fruit and um i guess i've, I've had my lifetime's worth of, of that type of humor <laughs> i don't know <laughs> whatever dude um hey i remember seeing a, a video of like this uh this chick who's a model like she's white and so she did a bunch of like instagram stories or something where she was like mimicking uh an indian accent as in she was like in india and um you know she was like saying stuff like oh look at what look at what they're doing here oh my gosh they're they're riding camels or something and it's just like perpetuating this kind of culture of like oh let's just look down on them or whatever I don't know like it's it is kind of scary how, how quickly you can like get canceled because of stuff like that um sometimes of course I'm I'm like oh yeah you know when you see when you see people who like you just really don't like their behavior and then you 
you see like the the social media mom come after them but i'm sure it's like super scary and like um i don't know it's it's like do you really want to wish that on people i don't know man and sometimes it's for you know not so great reasons so that's just one of those things where i'm like okay whatever get it out of here i'm not here to like you know i don't know be some sort of like a uh, preacher about like yeah you can't say these things and such and such but um that's just my view like i don't i'm just not just not as on board with stuff like that but this kind of is related to how be you know being an you know being an expat in tokyo pretty much um pushes you into this like uh this position of like making humor out of your situation right and you can tell how uncreative people are because they always make the same foreigner jokes in Tokyo. Um, it's, I mean, it's, I, I get it, dude. Like, Japan is a certain way or, like, life in Tokyo is, is a certain way, right? And you're always going to be running into these these problems as a foreigner. But sometimes I can't help but feel like, dude, like, just move on with it you know like i get it it's it's what you have to deal with but get out of here man not as in like leave the country i mean like it just just yes you know <laughs> it's gonna happen it's just like how i almost always have to like do a secondary explanation of where i come from actually no that's not true in tokyo i feel like so many people were like incredibly accepting of when I said I was from Los Angeles. Um, it's more like when I come back here. <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. I don't particularly count like how many times that happens. But um, yeah, like, you know, it's just, um, oh, I'm so offended. They they asked me if I could use chopsticks or, or you when you get, uh, when you get, oh, hashi o jose desu ne? Like, <laughs> when you when someone tells you um you're chop you're good at using chopsticks or whatever um that's understandable though i mean I, I get it like i'm i'm not i don't when i go there people think i'm japanese so they never pull that shit on me um but i did have one time someone did actually say to me oh you're like really good at chopsticks and i was like yeah um my parents are chinese and then they're like chinese people use chopsticks <laughs> oh man i don't like i just don't know you know <laughs> i just don't know what is going on so okay um yeah what i wanted to mention was uh, i'm sick and tired of fax machine jokes <laughs> and i i know it's like every expat's like favorite thing to go to purely because it's it's so easy and in a way that's kind of what i mean by this it's like it's such a cheap joke like, oh my gosh, fax machines are so archaic and old. I can't, how could people use these? Oh my goodness. But then like, I'm like, no, seriously though. Uh, the fields of law and healthcare use fax machines a lot, you know? And yes, admittedly, they're a little bit behind the times in technology. But I feel like there are valid reasons for fax machines existing, you know? One reason why a fax machine is used, over email especially, is because fax machines tend to be direct connections from one machine to another. What you're literally doing is kind of like phoning another machine and saying, this paper, I'm going to send it to you, you know, like, and it's just you, you know, there's no worldwide web to go to. There's no like f sending it to a server, which can be captured, you know, by like the NSA or whatever, or, you know, a, a, uh, what is it? Man in the middle, a, is it a man in the middle? Yeah, a man in the middle attack. Like, SMTP is technically old too. Like, the, the backbone of email is also old. Like, shouldn't we? Isn't that archaic? I can't believe we still use email. Yeah, but then there's like Zoomers who will say that. So, <laughs> whereas email is still one of the best, like, I mean, from my point of view, like, email is still one of the best marketing channels um, because of its intimacy, right? And it's just like when. I, I get it. People don't really look at snail mail. I don't really either. But, like, it's still a communication medium. I don't know. I guess it's just one of those, like, can we can we agree to, like, treat all the communication mediums equally? I mean, maybe not. 
maybe there is there's a case to be made in every situation right it's contextual that's i guess that's all everything boils down to ever anyway everything is contextual like look at the context right <laughs> damn it just answered my own question no but seriously it's always like oh they use fax machines like okay like is that supposed to get a laugh out of me like i don't know but that's just me like maybe maybe i'm the true cynical japan expat who left because he couldn't make a life out there you know <laughs> whereas everyone who's like who's been there for like 10 years is actually the real winner right teaching english for 10 years straight or something like that but um, <laughs> i don't know man yeah i don't know what was the last thing i thought about that was related to this I don't know. Yeah, I remember trying to ask a friend, like, is there a word for when you just don't like, uh, like, stupid foreign language jokes? I don't think, I don't know. I don't think there is a word for it. But it was, it was like a, I can't remember the example anymore, unfortunately. But it was just, it had something to do with the fact that, like, like, a lot of people as expats will be like, oh my gosh, like, look at, look at how strange it is to say this in a foreign language and then i don't know i just can't help but feel like why why do you feel it is so strange it's someone else's language you know i don't know man i don't know it's, it's my question to you i guess but uh yeah i don't know i mean i've yeah i've had these thoughts before in the past again i'm not uh i'm not some sort of saint or whatever um but I feel like I've looked, I've tried to move on past that because I feel like, you know, what's the point? So, yeah, I don't know. This this one's uh this one's a little bit tougher to to get through purely because I'm just going all over the place. I'm trying to I'm trying to articulate my frustration with a I guess with some sort of like the ideas behind why, you know why we would think this way and why we think it's okay or why we think it's funny or why we always lean on something like this right so yeah but i don't know um maybe it's because i now i think like language learning is super cool and i actually want to learn a lot of languages <laughs> that i'm just like whatever man but I get it. I've I've done the whole like, did you know that in this language it goes like this? And people are like, oh my gosh, that's so wacky. But then uh, now I'm like, oh no, that's not what I meant to do at all. <laughs> I wanted to show you an interesting tidbit that could be confusing as a language learner, but then you don't relate to me that way because you're you don't have the same amount of interest as me. Ah, uh, there we go. So anyway, that's uh, that's food for thought um let me know what you think in the comments <laughs> about uh accents uh expat jokes i don't cheap jokes i don't know like language jokes that are dumb or whatever um and uh yeah i guess let me know if uh there are languages you want to learn because i'm always interested in knowing what other people are interested in or what they're passionate about and why so anyway thanks for watching the daily dave i hope you enjoyed it peace out